Hi everybody, it's Trisha with Chocolate Musings. Today we'll set up my February bullet journal with a loose, whimsical space theme filled with lots of sparkle. Here is a little sneak peek of the finished pages. I love this whimsical space theme. In fact, I love it so much that I've used it before, twice. Do you ever have a theme in your bullet journal that you love and revisit? This is definitely one that I revisit on a regular basis. The cover page for February is actually a recreation of my April 2018 welcome page, but this month is also heavily inspired by my May 2020 space theme. I don't know what it is, but I find myself painting a lot of galaxies and space-related items even outside of my bullet journal. I brightened the colors on the cover page from the original one I created in 2018 and added a few more elements. There are a few ways to make your bullet journal themes whimsical and loose and it, this is by far one of my favorite styles to use. One technique is to use bright colors. I tend to use a lot of jewel tones. I really love jewel tones. Another way to make your theme whimsical is to add thick, dark outlines around your painting. So it brings it down to kind of a cartoony level, but that's the style that I'm going for, and it's very forgiving. You'll see throughout my theme this month, I'll doodle circles around all the planets, and they all look very whimsical and fun. I have to admit that I missed out on using watercolor for a long time in my life. I seriously thought that all watercolors were muted, pale, washed out, and only came in pastel. I'm not sure where I got that impression, but as you can see, that is anything but the truth. Here I'm adding a bit of water to the page so that I can get the watercolor to blend nicely on its own as I'm creating the clouds across the top. Hopefully you can see the sheen on the paper where I put the water down. This paper dries very quickly so you have to work fast. And, and you can't add too much water. To dry the watercolor faster, once I've got all the color on there, I'll use a blow dryer on low so that it doesn't spray the paint around. When I paint on regular watercolor paper, not notebook paper, I do a much better job of layering the colors. In fact, in a bullet journal, you still have to be very careful with the amount of, of water and color you use. Even with these thick pages, it can still seep through. I paint very differently from one medium to another, but it's just a matter of adapting. I forgot to hit record when I started painting the sun on the monthly page, but this is pretty much the end result. I'll add a mini calendar in the middle of the sun and a very simple vertical monthly log list on the opposite page. I'm 
I'm adding the first initial of the members of my family so that I can indicate which person belongs to the event and appointment on this monthly log. At the bottom, I have a section called important and to the right, I added the monthly to-do list. This month, I decided to add some black pages into my journal for the weeklies and kind of scattered throughout and the habit trackers. I will adhere the pages to the book with washi tape. The additional pages came from a notepad from Archer and Olive. I bought this notepad very early on when they first started offering it, so they might have changed the size since then, but as you can see, this page isn't as wide as my notebook page. So I will use the washi tape to kind of extend the page a bit so that it aligns with my other pages. I love using black paper because I have watercolor paint that is color shifting and it shows very differently on black paper versus white paper. I think it's more beautiful on black paper so I love the opportunity to see that color shift. The page on the left will be my brain dump page. And here's the inspiration for the alternate name for brain dump this month. If you hate the name brain dump, I have a blog post with 150 different names for brain dump and I will link that below. You will notice that I do not, I very rarely use the name brain dump. This month, since it's space related, I decided to use out of this world thoughts and I will use my helix circle maker which is my favorite tool it is seriously my favorite circle making tool at first I was going to have a big world as I did in my first example but since I'm only using the left half of the page instead of a full spread I decided to make a smaller earth For the habit tracker, I'll use the circle maker again, and I always like to mark the center of the circle in case I need to come back and do another line or make a correction. I think this habit tracker turned out great. I had made some previous marks and I guess I didn't follow them exactly. Maybe I should have taken my own advice. I align the circle making tool with the zero degrees pointing to wherever I want to start and then start making the lines around the circle. I decide to track 10 habits for the month, five from my blog slash YouTube goals, and five for personal habits. I had a little trouble getting the gel pen to flow evenly so I had to keep backtracking, um, going back and forth on the lines, but in the end it turned out great. And then I will add lines to separate out the days. In this case, I'm going to separate out 
each day of the month by 10 degrees. The extra space remaining at the end, I will write in the names of my habits. Like I said, I don't, I don't know what I did. I must have been following the marks that I had made before and missed one, but I just add a little extra space at the end. It'll work out just fine. To finish it all off, I will add a bit of paint splatter so it looks like stars. I think I went a little overboard on the star splatter, but I love how shimmery it is. So maybe it is just the right amount. The weeklies are all going to have the same basic layout. I'll add in two facing black sheets and attach those for part of the weeklies. I create circles spaced throughout the page and once the paint is dry, I trace around the circles with either white gel pen or a thick black fine liner, depending on the color of the page. Then I'll add the names of the days of the week, and the page is done. I'll add a few other elements to make each week unique, but they are all very similar and they're super easy to create. One thing that I have found about using this type of watercolor, the really sparkly color shifting kind, is that they always seep through the pages, even when other watercolor does not, especially on the white sheets. The black pages, I actually don't have that issue. I found some watercolor ground. The kind I have here is Daniel Smith Transparent Watercolor Ground but they do have watercolor ground and white and black as well. I painted that on the first white pages and it worked, no bleed through. So if you have struggled with that in the past, that is your solution is to find some watercolor ground. You can also turn any other surface into a watercolor canvas just like any other material, you might have to do a little adjusting to your technique, but for my purposes, it worked great.
after the weeklies, I included my journal page. I was trying to do something with the watercolor and make the northern lights, and it turned into a bit of a mess, so I added a ton of sparkle splatters and called it good. If you've watched my channel, I try and keep mistakes in and show you what happens when I do make a mistake. I won't bore you with the painting process for this one, but I want to show you that it's okay to make mistakes and try new things in your journal or your art. Now that I've got all the painting done, I'm going to fill out some of the events and appointments I know that we have this month. I'll refer to my future log in the front of the book and fill those appointments in on the monthly page and on the weekly page. I discovered that using the top three method, I don't even know if that's what it's called, for my to-do list every day is super beneficial. I find that when I assign a task to the top three things I need to get done, I definitely get more done because I don't feel so overwhelmed by all the things. And it creates a priority system. It's just worked out really well. So I'm assigning I'm just writing in one, two, three on each day. I'll go through and add all the appointments and then add my blog schedule and my YouTube schedule that I've got loosely planned in. I hope you've enjoyed this plan with me for February 2022 and found some inspiration. I love this loose, whimsical style. It's very forgiving of mistakes, but it looks like you intend it to look that way, which I did. Let me know if you decide to try it out or if you have any questions, I'll be happy to answer those. Bye everybody, have a good month.